Hello, it's Rob again, talking about different types, uh, different parts of a fountain pen. This isn't an in-depth thing, so if you're an expert fountain pen owner, or you know what you're talking about, then quite honestly, you know, this video is probably not for you. But this forms part of my fountain pen journey, and should anyone else out there be new to fountain pens, if you're an absolute beginner, a complete newbie, then hopefully this will this little guide will help you. It's just a uh, simple thing looking at the different parts of a fountain pen. I'm not going to go into any massive amounts of detail, but I'm going to help guide you through the process uh, of you know how the pen works, things like that. And to be honest, just look at you know the different parts because they're confusing. The anatomy of a fountain pen isn't straightforward. To be honest, if you knew the anatomy of a uh, ballpoint pen, it's got a ball, do you know where the barrel is? Well, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but something that you don't cover. But you do need to know a bit about this to, you know, help you on your own journey into uh, fountain pens. So I've got a few pens here. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll start off with this. One of my favourite pens. It's cheap. Cost a pound off eBay from China, including shipping, and it is a Jinhao X450, and it looks great. I'll move that one out of the way. It's a nice-looking pen, blue and white marbled finish. It's nice, nice trim. Looks good. Looks great on the desk. Get it out in a meeting. What's not to like about it? So, start off. If you like the top of the pen, the cap. That's the cap. Contrary to popular belief, you'll have all sorts of people calling it all sorts of other things, but in the fountain pen world, it is known as the cap in general. It's the thing which covers the nib. It protects it, hopefully stops it from drying out too much. At the very top, this black thing here is called the finial. It's basically the end of the cap. It can be all sorts of shapes, all sorts of designs. You can have like this one here, the cap and the finial, the, the finial on the cap and the clip are very close together. So this one, you can see there's a band just below the finial, the black finial, with the clip. Clips, generally I find, are a bit of a pain. All of these Jinhao pens are pretty strong clips. They're very unpleasant to use with your fingers. Um, they will slip onto a shirt pocket, but that can be a bit tight. I personally don't like it. I mean, yes, you can clip the thing to your paper, or if you've got a, uh, a clipboard, it will just about clip onto the clipboard. It's so tight. So at the bottom, you've got a band for the cap. So this bottom band here. It's got Jin Hao and X450, the model number written on it, manufacturer Jin Hao. And there's not much more to it. Inside, you probably can't see this in the video very well, but you know, it's got plastic finish in there and there is a looks like a rivet of some description at the bottom, which is connecting the cap uh, to the uh, to the clip there and the finial I suspect it's probably just glued onto the top, but it's very secure. Some good quality fountain pens, or even some cheap ones, will have a liner in there which covers the nib a little bit more than just the cap itself. And that's to stop the ink that's in the feed and the nib from drying out. So it writes pretty much first time every time. So that's the cap. Further down, we have the barrel. This is the bit that generally rests inside in your hand. And at the bottom we've got another band, gold band in this case, and a bottom cap, finial, whatever it is, a bottom sort of finial there. So we take the cap off, pop that there, and it's pretty obvious this is a fountain pen. And it's the nib. It's the metal bit with a tip. The tip is where the ink comes out of onto the paper. That's the important bit. This is where it writes. So, 
take good care of the uh, the nibs and tips especially. They're often plated with stuff, so it'll have a harder metal, um, depending on how much you pay for it. Depends on how good a quality nib you've got. I mean, this this one is actually gold plated, so you know, it's not solid gold. It's not worth the earth, but it looks great. So we've got a bit of silver on there. A very nice looking nib for the price and a plastic feed at the back with various ridges in which are all designed to allow air to flow into the body of the pen so that ink can flow onto the paper without it stopping, starting, stalling, drying up, that type of thing. On this particular pen, I don't know whether you can see it, but there is a very small breather hole which allows the nib, the, uh, the ink to flow into the nib and down between the two tines. The two prongs that are together, the pointy tip is doing the writing and the tines have a capillary action of ink flow that drags the ink through this feed, the black feed, from the cartridge or ink reservoir inside the pen. So uncapped, you've got a fountain pen. The bit that you hold on to is called the section. And these can be sort of all the way down here or all the way up here depending on what you're looking at. But certainly on this pen, I really love the sections on these pens. They're pla black plastic, they've got a few if you like, ridges on there so it's not quite as slippery, but I find them really comfortable. It's got three ind indentations, pretty much forcing you to hold your pen like this, and it works really well for me. It works well for my style, doesn't work for everybody's style of holding the pen. So, the rest of the pen, the barrel. This is the body of the pen. If you unscrew this, remember not all of them unscrew. Inside here, you see it's got screw threads. Inside here, this is where the ink goes. So you've got an ink reservoir. Now, this is what holds the ink. It's pretty self-explanatory. This particular example, most of these, if not all of these Jin Heng pens, and the Chinese pens, come included with a, with a standard international ink converter, which is brilliant, because this means that you can use this pen with absolutely any ink that you choose to. I mean, yes, you can use all sorts of inks, but I'd recommend fountain pen inks, simply because it's <laughs> they're designed to work with fountain pens. Um, and this one, I'm not going to do it because there is it is inked up, there is ink in there. If I mess around with this, it's going to go everywhere. One thing to watch with fountain pens. But you'll notice I'm not covered in ink, so, you know, they're not as bad as they used to be. People used to sort of get ink blots all over the place. I haven't experienced a lot of that. Obviously, if you spend a lot of time messing around with it, which I do on occasions, you end up with inky fingers. But in general, they're pretty clean. So this thing, the black bit up here, you can turn it, and there is a piston that moves up and down. And it lower it all the way to the bottom, dip the nib all the way into the ink bottle and wind it up. I usually do two or three winding up, down, up, down, up, down and it will fill this up pretty much all the way with ink, whatever ink you like and it's brilliant. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to use bottled inks for whatever reason, you can buy cartridges, little plastic cartridges which fit into any standard international cartridge converter pen. I don't like them particularly because you don't get the choice of inks, they tend to be a lot more expensive, they're not economical and to be honest if you're interested in environmental, um, you know, how green using a fountain pen is, you think about how many ballpoint pens are just disposable, thrown away every day, every year, millions and millions of them. So, if you choose a fountain pen, you can keep it a lifetime. If it's a good one, you know, it's going to last many, many years and can be handed down. You know, it's a nice, uh, nice heirloom for future generations if you do spend that sort of money on a pen. So, once you've filled this with ink, you can write. Pop the barrel back on there, then it's good to write. Now, this particular example, as you can see, fits nicely in my hand. 
I love the weight of these Jinhao X450s and some of the other Jinhao pens. They're metal bodied. They're nice weighty pens. You feel you've got something in your hand. It's not like a big biro. I keep saying big biro. Ballpoint pen. Disposable ballpoint. This thing's got some. It's not heavy, but it's got some weight behind it. I can write with this for quite a long time. My hand doesn't cramp up. It, it's not so heavy that it's annoying. Now, one thing that you will see in some videos, and it's always worth mentioning, if I was ever using a ballpoint pen, uh, which I still do from time to time at work, I always post the cap. Now, that's a term that you'll hear quite a lot in the fountain pen community. Basically, all it means, posting the cap, you take the cap off, and you post it on the back of the pen. I always do that with a ballpoint pen. For some reason, I don't do it with fountain pens. I don't know what it is. It can change the weight, to be honest. Jinhao X450, this pen, does not post well. It's wobbly, it doesn't go on there securely, it falls off. There's no point trying to post it. And also, it adds a lot of weight to the back of the pen. So this is suddenly starting to feel back heavy. It's uncomfortable to write with. So, that goes to one side. Or, I find I tend to hold it. I don't know, some, some sort of reassurance thing. Pull the cap off, write, cap back on. Push to click uh, on the cap, very simple. The clip, now, I mentioned the clip earlier. One thing that is quite useful about clips is the fact that it stops your pen rolling. This is a round pen, you know, it's not going to roll off the desk, off the page, wherever you're working. Some pens don't have clips, and they roll all over the place. So suddenly you've gone from using a ballpoint, which has perhaps got, I don't know, several facets on the barrel of the pen, and it won't roll, and you've got a cap on there with a clip, so it doesn't roll anyway, and you suddenly come around to using a round, uh, section, a round sectioned uh, pen, and you put it down, and it rolls away wherever you like, it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to roll off the desk. And if that nib hits the floor or any hard surface, chances are it's going to be ruined. It will bend, or at least it will put it out of tune, chances are it won't write ever again, so you've got to be careful with that. So that is why some people do like a fountain pen that posts, because it gives you the clip that stops the pen rolling. However, in this case, not really possible. So you've just got to be very careful. As yet, I haven't damaged a fountain pen. But, you know, chances are I'll probably do that this week. They're all very much the same. This is a Bauer, very similar to the Jinhao pens. Looks very much like a Parker clip, bit of a rip-off. Looks very 50s. Same thing. It's got a Nib, section, black section, round in this case, quite smooth but grippy. And you unscrew it. And there we have a standard international converter. This one's empty now. Let's talk about this because I can demonstrate. Let's wind it down, up, there we go. Wound up to the top. Now in here, There is a small glass bead. Now that will agitate the ink. Anything, any of these cartridge converters with an agitator in, sometimes the small glass beads like this, which you know is pretty good because that's going to clean really easily. Or that it can be a metal spring, small metal spring that slides up and down. They're really useful for cleaning, um, for helping to clean out the pens, also to keep the ink flowing. Sometimes ink has a habit of maybe getting down to the last third of the converter and it starts to, if you like, not write very well. It writes dry, it's a bit scratchy, you don't get as much ink flow, doesn't look quite as good on the paper. These little agitators inside can help with that because it breaks up the surface tension of the ink if you happen to move it around. Um, also, and this is completely separate, this is for another video altogether, if you've got any of the shimmering inks, which have got 
very, very fine metal particles in, which can put down a sort of um, a glossy or shimmering type um, glittery finish with your writing, then I would certainly recommend only using those with a converter which has an agitator so that you can keep the small metal metallic particles in suspension in the ink so it doesn't just all flow down the um, flow down into the feed and clog the feed but I've not got into shimmering inks yet when I do I'll let you know so just to demonstrate if I was to want to ink this up there's the whole pen take off the barrel so the section where the nib this is the section there's the nib and the cartridge converter they're all connected make sure that that's in place wind the piston in the converter down to the bottom I'll wind it up again just in case you didn't see that so wind that all the way down to the bottom and to fill it all you have to do is get your bottle of ink and dip it into the bottle usually up to the section so that the entire nib that's the whole nib is in, inserted below the surface level of the ink in the bottle and then turn this some of them have a slide and you use that to wind it to, uh, to get the piston to raise then you turn it and it raises and as it raises up it will pull ink in through the feed and the nib in through the section and, in, and into the converter and what usually happens is it won't on the first pull the first draw fill the converter fully so hold it in the same position in the ink bottle descend the plunger all the way down by turning the, the uh, converter raise it up again and down again and I usually find that on the third raise of the plunger you get the maximum fill always seems to work that way sometimes it's beneficial to when you've got a brand new pen or even as part of a routine cleaning and maintenance on a fountain pen to basically wash the thing through flush it you can use hot water just normal hot water out of the tap don't use boiling water because on some pens these feeds are um, made of ebonite not so on these cheap like uh, cheap Chinese pens but ebonite and it will be affected by hot water and it may affect the way the pen writes so you can use this to go into your hot water you can add if you've got a cup of hot water you can have one tiny drop of washing up liquid uh, which is uh, liquid detergent no more you don't want foamy bubbles all over the place and that will help with a new pen if you do this lots and lots of times or use a bulb syringe which I'll talk about in another video raise and lower the thing several times and I'm talking quite a few ten or more which can be a bit time consuming you just raise it up flush it out keep doing that and any if you like residual um, oils, greases, even perhaps small tiny particles of metal from any of the finishing processes will be flushed out of the feed and the nib and the cartridge and you will find that the ink flow is improved from day one. So whenever you get a brand new fountain pen and it comes with a standard international cartridge converter I thoroughly recommend doing that because it will help. It's not always necessary but it's recommended. So, once you've filled your cartridge converter with whatever ink you like, remember you can choose any colours. You don't have to just go with blue and black, and if you want blue and black, there are even more of those uh, different types of colours. I mean, when you think black ink's black ink, it isn't. There's grey inks, there's black inks which have got a hint of blue, there's black inks with a hint of red. All sorts of colours, really, really interesting colours that you can use in a fountain pen, which you can't ever get from using a ballpoint pen. So screw that together and your pen is ready to write. Don't forget to keep the cap on the pen when you're not using it. It protects the nib, it also stops the ink from drying out in the, uh, in the feed and the nib. If you leave that on a desk, unattended, 
for a day, maybe even a couple of days, this thing will not write. You will need to clean it. So that's a case of sometimes just swilling it around in a cup of hot water, but the chances are you'll need to get the ink out and do all the flushing with the converter so that you can clean all this feed out, things like that. So it's not a ballpoint pen. You have to maintain them and look after them. But that's part of the hobby. It's part of the fun. I find it's very much like I'm not a pipe smoker, but, you know, some choose, some people choose to smoke a pipe. And there's a whole lot to it. You've got to clean them, you've got to scrape stuff out, you've got to bash stuff out and clean them, all sorts of stuff. And it's part of the process. It's the same with fountain pens. They're a pleasure to use. If you think they're a nightmare because, you know, you've got to do all that finicky cleaning, which, to be honest, isn't finicky. It might take you five minutes once a week or once every month, depending on how often you use your pens. It's not a big deal. If you think it's a big deal, chances are fountain pens aren't for you. But hopefully, if you've got into fountain pens, and you're interested in learning all about the different types and styles, I mean, the colours in these can be really, really lovely. There's a whole range of pens out there. And you can start off cheaply. I don't want to say you must go out and spend £300 on a fountain pen to get a good uh, good feel for the hobby. Get one of these. Watch my introductory videos because these are all videos which are going to help you learn about the things which I wish I knew or were, if you like, made very clear in the early days when I first started back in July 2017 collecting pens and getting into it. It's a great hobby. Just sometimes, you know, it's not straightforward and you don't know. The first pen I got, quite honestly, all I did, I stuck a, I bought a lot of cheap um, different coloured uh, standard international cartridges from Amazon, stuck them in the pen and it writes. And then after a week, ink was running out so I thought oh, I'll just stuck any old colour in and it still worked I mean they are a bit forgiving it's not like the thing's going to stop working immediately but I'm paying a pound for these pens if I was spending several hundred I think I'd want to care for it a little bit better than just sticking any old ink in because some of the inks can have reactions with each other it can corrode the metal that forms part of the pet fountain pen and the nib it can damage it so you know that's part of the journey but if you learn things like this, these little tips that I provide in the, um, these sort of videos, you won't make those mistakes. Because I don't really think anyone is going to get into a fountain pen habit by spending maybe £300 on a fountain pen, or perhaps getting something like that as a gift, and thinking, well, OK, I'll just stick a cartridge in it, leave it for a month, oh, it doesn't write, what a load of rubbish. It's not. They just need a little bit more understanding. And unfortunately, unless you're into the hobby, it's not clear. So hopefully this video has helped you. Please do subscribe, because I can help um, you with all sorts of other different things uh, on this fountain pen journey. It is a journey. I'm not, I'm not going to make any doubt. I have no doubts about this. I have got an awful lot to learn about fountain pens. And I hope you, that you will join me on it. Thanks for watching.